We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Talking with Glenn Cranfield. He's the CEO over at the Nashville Rescue Mission. And uh, the man and the folks he works with over there do uh, great work. Yeah, thank great you. Work. Thank you. you know, we're very we're, proud of them. We're going to take some calls for you. But as I said, I was over there. You know, sir, I do this every year. And, and this is one of the charities that I support and give to, which is true every year I give a check. But it's um, interesting being in line there serving. And it's the time I get to see the people coming through. And there's on Thanksgiving hundreds. But I know this right. happens every day. And I always watch, Glenn, and, and, and as they come by and smile and say hello, and they're all so nice and thankful, but um, wondering what their backstory is. I yeah. can, and, you know, and you see some that come in a little more ratty and tired, and you can tell they've really had a rough. Others come in that are in a suit. Professionals. That could be literally professionals that right. maybe just hit on hard times and are out. It's a mixed bag, isn't it? It is a mixed bag. We have construction workers. We have people that are musicians yeah. that haven't made it. We have pe you know. Uh, <coughs> We had some people visiting from across the nation in other shelter works, and we were helping, you know, teach them some things, doing some classes and courses. And they said Nashville is unique, and that you have people coming through the line with guitars on mm -hmm. their back, you know. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's all every demographic: women, children, men, professionals, and those that are very ill, those that are bound to wheelchair. You experience sure, that in saw some of them. Those that are on walkers, the aged, the young, and so. You know, we reach out with compassion to each and every one of them. Every single one of them has a story. Oh, yeah. Every one of them has a name. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was one of the things that I learned quickly in, Nash in rescue mission work. I asked a guy, you know, he was coming through the line, and he said, bless you. They're, oh, they're so grateful. Mm -hmm. They're always so grateful. Yeah. He said, bless you. And I said, bless you. And as he walked on, I said, hey, what's your name? And he turned around, and he looked at me, and he said, what? Hmm. I said, what's your name? Mm -hmm. And he told me his name. He said, no one has ever asked yeah. me my name. You know what? And they, uh, just to just enter that, enter beyond that surface, yeah. just to go a little bit to deeper. get to know you as yeah. a person instead right. of just. I'm at value. Yeah. You know, that's why you're because saying. That's the way we should treat they everyone in dignity. life, right? Absolutely. They have dignity. They have honor. They have value. There are all kinds of issues that have caused them and, and are complex and comprehensive that have brought them to the place where they are. So they come to the doors of the rescue mission. But at the end of the day, they're valuable. They have dignity. Oh, yeah. And we should honor them. They're hard. Knox, do you believe that uh, I've covered my share of homeless stories and I've run into some individuals, not through the mission, but are in some of these campsites and sure. stuff, where they convinced me, and I'm not sure they're all there completely, that that's the way they truly choose to live. And a lot of people say, no one really wants to be homeless. Well, I, I think I've met a couple people that that's the way they want and they seem very happy. And I don't know. I didn't get to know them well. It's very rare. I think deep down, if you get through it all, most people would much rather have a place to live and a job and a steady life. But some of them, it's, for whatever reason, I, I bought that. In general, though, I, I find that the vast, vast, vast majority are there just because of a couple of hard knocks. They're not choosing to be that way. Right. And they, you know, just all of a sudden lost a job and they couldn't make the mortgage and they lost their home. Right. Or maybe got addicted to a couple of these pain pills after That's having right. back surgery, okay? That's and that right. happens to a lot of people. It doesn't make you a bad person. Sure. And that they all of a sudden just hit on a rough time. And, and when I see that, you know, I want to give to them, but I take as much away realizing how just if a few turns go this way for me, I'm sure. standing right where they are. Absolutely. And it can happen to anyone. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And you know, they deal with, again, the, the reasons are so complex. All of those that you mentioned, and then other things, depression. Oh, yeah. When depression sets in, you know, you lose the will to even face the day. All these kinds of things happen. You lose a job. You get ill. You lose your job because of an injury. All kinds of things. You don't have insurance. You lose insurance. And first one thing or another, then you resort to drinking to kind of numb the pain or yeah. drugs or prescription meds as you talked about and then you're on this downward spiral right and you need somebody to reach down in the midst of that spiral and just grab hold of you and say I'm here I'm here you know and it's it's interesting and I was sharing this with somebody the other day it takes a lot longer to get out than it does to get in oh you're right and so to be able to walk them out with our life coaches and with case managers and counselors and find out as much as they will help us and tell us what kind of the story of your of your life give us your backstory so we can help begin grabbing hold of you and walking you out of this 
this. I would love to say it's quick and easy, but it's difficult and it's long. Right, I bet we've seen it work. Listen, we have some calls, a lot of people, uh, you know, with questions or comments. Let's go to Sue. Good morning, Sue. Good morning. Hi. Um, I'm going to preface what I'm about to say by indicating that I have been known to donate food to the mission, uh, primarily perishable food. I, I donate to Second Harvest, and um, as far as the other uh, things that the mission does in terms of providing shelter, I, you know, I provide, I, I donate to charities, charities that, that serve those functions. My difficulty with the mission, other than what I just said, I mean, I, I, like I said, I've donated the food rather than let it go to waste. Sure. Um, but my difficulty with the mission, and I've had this explained, but not to my satisfaction, is that I feel like what is being offered is basically with strings. Now, I'm told that um, you don't have to believe in the manner that the people that do the work believe, but um, to me, I, I mean, I don't liken that to being a guest in someone's home. I mean, you can't live the way you live in your own home when you're a guest. It, 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 it mm -hmm. implies some respect for the host, and of course the host would have some respect for you as well. Sure. But it's a little bit different here. I just think that there are strings attached, and I kind of like to see that addressed. And also, the second question would be, um, what, what, what is the setup in other cities? In other words, do all major cities have a mission, and do they not have? I would, I would rather see the public sector take care of this, or, the, and, or even the private sector, but just with no <laughs> strings attached. Okay. Strings attached. Great Did question. Okay, go ahead. I appreciate that. We are a Christian faith shelter, and we operate with Christian principles. And uh, we don't, uh, you know, I, I don't. I, I appreciate the question so much. I'll just answer it this way, and then I'll mm -hmm. expound on it. There aren't any strings attached. We serve three meals a day to anyone that's hungry. And so they can come for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have a case management, we have clothes, we have counseling, we have all of those things, life coaches that are able, and even assisting and helping them get with veterans administration or getting with mental health co-op, all of those things. What compels us to do what we do is our Christian faith. And so we have people that are there that aren't of the Christian faith, that are of no faith. Mm -hmm. We have people there that are of other faiths beyond the Christian faith. And so we serve them equally with the same compassion and the same love. And uh, obviously for those that who want to know more about our Christian faith, then we stand ready to explain that and so forth. But there aren't any strings attached to receiving services at the mission. Now we do have in the evening time, we do have an evening chapel service every evening for all of those that are wanting to spend the night there. And it's a time to collect everybody on both campuses. And we have different people coming from different walks of life throughout Nashville. Some music they sing. Uh, we have a wonderful group of musicians mm -hmm. here in Nashville. Nashville, they just come and sing to them and enjoy that time together. Nice. And so, you know, the, that as far as strings attached, that's I guess that would be the only thing is that collective time together just before bedtime. Gotcha. All right, let's go next to Great uh, question. Yeah, that's, let's go to Renee. Renee, good morning. Hey, good morning, Hi, um, <laughs> Mr. Canfield. Cranfield, um, I really do admire your work down at the mission. Um, I've not been there personally, but I do donate, have donated for years. And I'm glad that you're on this morning because I wanted to talk about, uh, well, I'll probably call you, but I have a donation uh, that I'd like to make. And it's of some t-shirts that I designed. <laughs> but I'd like to talk to you about how I would like those to be disseminated amongst your um, your workers particularly, the ones who work with you long term. And is there a way to like reach you? Um, I know you've got staff and everything, but sure. if I wanted to just reach you and leave a message, is there a way to do that? Well, how about this? Renee, I'll put you on hold, and if you'd like, um, maybe we can get her phone number back That's there right. in control, and they'll get your number, Renee, and then Rick will give the number to him. And you can call her. Yeah, absolutely. Is that all right? You have absolutely. time to give her a call? That's absolutely. And Renee, I just want to thank you. We have so many people across the Nashville area, so many wonderful people that give all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. They give finances. Of course, our budget is $11 million a year, caring for 
150 people a night. And it's from where the uh, the the budget is. What the money comes from? What usually? It comes from private, private individuals. Okay. We don't receive any public oh, money. We don't receive any government money. So it's just private funding from individuals. 95 percent of our funding comes from individuals like Renee that care about the homeless and want to give a little bit to help. And donations can be cash, obviously, because then you can go buy what you need, foodstuffs. But she's talking about clothing as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, we have hats. People knit gloves. Mm -hmm. People knit scarves. All kinds of things. It just it warms of my heart when I walk back to the gift and kind area and find boxes where people have really got groups together and have knit knitting groups, mm -hmm. crocheting groups, and knitted gloves or mittens, and we pass those out to the women and children. It just warms my heart because it's people that care and give in a manner in which they can. That's great. Well, we'll get the number from Renee yeah. for you. But I was going to say one of the stories I've done a lot with the homeless in the past, and one that stuck with me was going over to the mission during one of the winters. It may have been before you started. How long have you been there now? Five years. Five years. It may have been even before that, but just one of those winters, there was just frigid. It was getting dangerous cold. And I remember they put a call out for blankets and heavy jackets and right. such. And so we went over there the morning that they were handing them out to many of these folks there that had nothing really to wear. And I just remember some of them walking up shivering, and then out would come this big, black, yeah. heavy wool overcoat and putting it around them, yeah. and that's your coat. You take it. And just how much it meant to them. It may have saved their lives. Oh, it yeah. does. It, you just watch their face. Yeah, just and, seeing them come up and get this. And somebody cared enough to help me with this. I mean, <laughs> they see that and they know that. And it just sends a strong message to them of, again, of their dignity and their value. And that's what I want to know. With the dignity and value, does it take a point for some that maybe are proud and they hit on hard times before they're going to accept a free meal or accept a hand-me-out? For some of them, their pride may not allow them to do that. They're, and I understand that. There's sure. certainly nothing wrong with having that, but maybe some refusing to say, well, I'm, I'm just not going to go to the mission. I can't do that. Do you encounter that? And I mean, if someone says, look, I need the help, but I'm, I'm not coming there, Glenn, because I just, I'm too proud. What would you tell them? Uh, I would tell them we're all there. I mean, we all have that level of pride and, and it just needs to shatter in all of our lives. Nick, I need you. You need me. We need each other. Mm -hmm. There's different things that, that in, in the course of life that I've been in situations where I've needed family, I've needed friends, I've needed my church, I've needed people to surround me and to help me through some difficult times. Well, that's exactly what this is. It's just life exaggerated. And so you're in a place that's of good. need. And so now here we are standing ready to help and assist you. And it is not, you know, a lot of people get exactly what you're talking about. They get yeah. worked up about that. But then I sit down and talk to them. Let me tell you about times in life where I've been in need. Well, we all do. And I've yeah. needed help and I've struggled with pride and I've struggled with those same things you're struggling with. But then I got to a place to where the need was so great, I had to let go of the pride and get the help that I needed. And so glad I did. You know what I think every time? Why did it take me so long to, to get the help? <laughs> that is an awesome answer. That would that would resonate with me. It sure. makes perfect sense. Everyone needs help some point. Sure. And just because you're going to the mission, it's no different than maybe someone else who's going to a psychologist to talk or whatever the case may be. Right. That's just awesome. All right. We'll take a break on that note. If you're on hold, stay there. More phone calls for the CEO of the Nashville Rescue Mission right after this. Thank you.